good morning hello it's saturday and i'm here on facebook live it, the world has turned totally upside down this morning i i'm not sure whether anyone's gonna watch because who knows what happens on saturdays probably everybody's out having fun doing stuff but i'm here anyways and i'm going to do a christmas card tutorial for this for you this morning so I hope you can pop on in and watch or if you're watching on replay that's totally great too or on YouTube make sure you leave um, some comments if you've got questions or um, just wave and say hello tell me where you're watching from it would be lovely to see some faces in here this morning it is a beautiful Saturday lazy morning here in South Australia. The sun is shining. There are beautiful spring flowers popping up in the garden. My boys aren't being too crazy so I can get this tutorial done. Hey Janice, hey Katrina, how are you? Thank you for popping in and saying hello. Hey Mel. See there is people watching Facebook on Saturday mornings. I wasn't sure. Hey Vicky, how are you going? So we're, we're going to play with the stamp, with two stamp sets today. One is Dashing Deer. Now I did make a card with this a few weeks ago, but I'm sure you won't mind me um, sharing something else with you again. Hey Kay, hey Emma, how are you? Um, and the other stamp set that I feel like hasn't been loved enough, and I love it, is um, the Sheet Music stamp set. I bought this straight away as soon as it came out in the annual catalogue and I just feel like I haven't done enough with it yet. So today was the day. So we're using the Dashing Deer stamp set. We're actually not using a lot of the stamps. We're using mostly the framelit, which is so cute. Um, this beautiful little deer framelit. And we're going to be making two cards, actually. So that's, you know, two for the price of one. Um, we're going to be making two cards and we're, it's going to be a negative and positive card. And it's kind of something that I've never explored before. So I thought it would be fun. I'm not sure if it's very time efficient, Facebook Live card, but um, we'll see how we go. If I run out of time, we'll just do our best. <laughs> so let me spin you guys over. And I'll show you the cards we're going to make today rather than waving them in the air. Remember to share my Facebook Live if you're watching it live so other people can join in and watch it live too. Good morning, Rachel. How are you? Vicky's got her coffee. I'm jealous. I've only had the one coffee today. I need another one. Maybe afterwards. I usually let it go cold while I'm doing my Facebook Live anyway. So, all right, I'm going to flip you guys over. We're going to start making some cards. Okay, let me see. How I go, I'll do the, oh, I'm not sure whether Facebook's going to be nice to me today. There we are. Hey, Pamela, how are you? The lovely Pamela is in the house. Oh, I've just muted. I don't want to mute you. Okay. Can you hear me? Because now I'm not sure if you can hear me. Because something came up on my that said it was mute. Good morning, Shannon. Good. Yeah, because it said on my screen that it was muted. And that worried me a little bit. Okay, here are the cards we're going to make. Uh, and they're back to front, aren't they? Someone's going to tell me that. Um, very soon. Uh, let me see. I'm going to change it so it's not back to front. There. I'm so clever. Okay, let me plug in my earbud and see. They look cool. Good. I keep my earbud hidden now so my children can't attack it. Let's see how that goes. Beautiful sunshine, but um, there we go. Now, let me just find you all on my page. I can see your comments as I go. Okay, 
So here are the cards that we're making. It's a negative and positive card. So we're, we're getting the most out of all that we can possibly get out of this one card front. It's pretty fun, actually. It's a good way of making um, a bunch of cards. So let me show you up close. This is what I would say is the positive. We'll call this the positive card. So this is using the majority of the card back, backing with our little dashing deer. And this is the negative version. So this is using the cutouts of our card. So let's get on with it, right, and get making. So the first thing I've done with these cards is I wanted to share something with you that I do um, to make my life easier. Because I do work with a lot of white card bases, one thing that I like to do when I've got a few minutes or if I'm watching something on YouTube or whatever that, um, that I don't need a lot of brain attention for, you know, um, is I cut up a lot of card bases to have ready and on hand. So I tend to use a lot of white. You know I love my um, thick whisper white um, for the card bases so I just cut out like a ton of and I like them in this top fold that's my preference so I cut out a ton of those and I have them folded scored and ready to rock and roll here on my desk okay it just cuts down the amount of time the boring part of crafting which is you know I know I'm going to need a whole stack of those so I get them ready the other thing that I know I'm going to need a whole stack of is Whisper White card fronts. And I usually like them just a tiny bit smaller than the card backing. So I cut them a tiny bit smaller straight away. So it's one thing that I'm not going to have to do. So this one here, I've cut 10 centimeters by 14.4 centimeter card fronts. And I have got a bunch and they're all ready to go for when I need them. So I keep them close at hand. One less thing that stops me having fun crafting straight away. Okay, so I wanted to share that with you guys. A little bit of, um, I know some people cut up all of their card stock into card fronts, but you know, I'm not kind of that organized, but I just like, um, I just like the white. I like to get the white organized. So that's just a little tip for you. So with that being in mind, I've um, got my Whisper White thick card bases. So it's an A4 piece of cardstock. I've cut it down the middle and I've scored at the halfway point. And so that's ready. I've also got my piece of Whisper White cardstock. I've actually gone with Whisper White this time because I usually go with shimmery white but I went with Whisper White and it's 10 centimeters by 14.4 centimeters. Now I've got you could use your large block so if you've got this large block ready you could definitely use that or you could use your Stamparatus and place your music notes what is it called again sheet music you could pop your sheet music stamp in there. Um, let me, you can see mine's all in there, ready to rock and roll. Let me show you how to do that with your large block. If you've got a large block. So I, you just stick, I don't ever really bother putting the sticker on the back of these really large stamps. I just can't see the point of doing that. So I just leave it completely blank and put the sticker and, and it sticks sticks like a demon when you don't have that sticker on. And you know, so that's how I do that. The other then I get my Versamark. Make sure that you refill your Versamark because otherwise a dry Versamark just isn't going to win you any favours, all right? You can buy the refills. Let me see if I've got one here to show you. Here. You can buy the refills and be generous with your refills with your Versamark. You'd want them to be lovely and sticky. You want it to be a really juicy pad, okay? So I like to put my stamp upside down when I'm putting my Versamark on and just go to town. You want it to be really well inked up. Lots and lots of Versamark. 
because we want that powder to stick nicely. Okay, lots of verse mark on that one. Now, two ways that you can go about this. You could then turn it around and stick it down, but it's kind of hard to tell where your placement is that way. So I like to actually lay it on the top so I can work out exactly where my placement is. Lay it on the top, then get a piece of your blotting paper or your grid paper like I have and lay your hand over it like so and then give it a nice smooch. Okay, smooch it with your hand all over. You could even get your bone folder and go up and down like so, so you know that it's nice and even. And so you're really happy with that ink on there. Okay, then just be careful how you lift it off. All right, now you can see, I hope you can see, that there is a really good coverage of Versamark on our notes, our music notes, on that piece of cardstock. Now, embossing white powder, this nearly ended up on the floor. Well, it did end up on the floor, but luckily I saved enough uh, for it to keep on going. A little accident last night, you know, best laid plans. But I like to keep my white, I like to keep my clear in a tub. That way it's just super easy to get lots of powder. It's not too messy and I can have it nice and close at hand. One of the things that I find, and I know I've said this before, I'm a super lazy crafter. If things aren't at arm's reach, I'm probably not going to use them. Um, so if I um, have all of my embossing bits and pieces over at a desk that's far away, then I'm probably not going to do embossing. So, you know, that's the best of being, that's truthful, lazy crafter. The next thing you're going to do is get your heat gun and you're going to heat set all of that white embossing powder. And I can tell you, it does take a little while. Um, so I'm not going to show you all of that right now, but you just need to make sure that it's nice and shiny and well set. It's a difference between, let me see if I can show you. You can see how this is kind of a bit browny colour, it's got like a tone to it. When it's actually white embossed, it goes, it turns a true white colour. And that's going to take a while to do. So I was a good Girl Scout and I made one so we didn't have to sit and watch me heat gun for the next 10 minutes. I think that my heat gun might need to be quite, um, like you need to kind of make sure that it's nice and hot before you start as well, which I didn't do. So here I've got one that I've prepared. It's all totally heat set um, and ready to go. Now, my dog's just arrived, so the door's open. Let me just shut that for a minute. You know, it's it's always going to be a little bit weird when <sighs> doing a Facebook Live on a Saturday with all the kids and all the dogs and everyone around. Okay, so I've got my cardstock base. It is all heat embossed with the beautiful music sheet music. I did know what that music was, but now I can't remember what it is. Does anyone know off the top of their heads? I'm not sure. Now I'm going to get some car, some inks and I'm just wondering if I've tidied up too much and lost a major contributing part. Oh, here it is. So 
So I wanted to think about some nice colours that would go together and you know that I'm not super worried about traditional Christmas colours. We've talked about that before, right? So I don't really need to play um, colour in the lines when it comes to traditional Christmas colours. So I wanted to, um, to dip outside of that and think about some other colours. So I turned to Stampin' Up! because Stampin' Up! put, you know, they know what it's all about with, um, with colour combinations. So I looked at some embellishments that I wanted to use and the Share What You Love Artisan, uh, Artisan Pearls come in this great range of colours. So I thought, awesome, I'm just going to borrow on that. And you can do that definitely with all of your different Stampin' Up! combinations of designer series, paper, embellishments, ribbons. When Stampin' Up! coordinate things together, we kind of know that it works. So you can steal from that. So these colour combinations look pretty good together. So that's kind of what I've done. I've just stolen straight from this pad of embellishments. So the colours that we're going to play with today are traditional uh, Tranquil Tide. We have Rich Razzleberry. We have Grapefruit Grove. We have So Saffron, which I've got to say is probably one of my least used colours and I don't know why. Hey Sharon from Seattle, how are you going? Hey Karen, how are you? Um, and Janice, I think, I've, I'm not sure if I've said hello to Janice, how are you going? Um, and Petal Pink, which I have used a bit lately. So those are the colours in those embellishments. And I've just grabbed them and stolen from them because that's what I do. Now we're going to be using, now last week we used the, the brayer. And I thought not everybody loves the brayer. So I would not pull that out again. I know it's hard to believe. And I thought I'd just pull out my sponges, which I, I used to use a lot. But now I kind of use the brayer more. But I thought it might be fun to go back to some basics. So... Let's get out our Tranquil Tide. It's kind of a dark colour, the Tranquil Tide, but that's okay. And also I played around with, I did this one first and I wasn't totally happy with the order of the colours. So I've played around and I'm much happy with my colour order now. So I'm starting down the bottom with the Tranquil Tide. And a tip that I always find with the sponges is to start off the page. Because when you start on the page, the first bit that you do is tends to be darker than the rest. Can you see that? That first bit that I did was pretty dark, but then it kind of blended a lot softer. So if you think about, if you're going to do that on your cardstock, the first daub that you put on is going to be really dark. And then you're going to have to try and fix that for the rest of your time to make it blend a little bit better. Oh, now Sharon's telling me that they washed the disgusting gum wall in Seattle. No, Sharon. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, don't wash it. It was fun. Okay, so I'm going to start off the bottom and then we're going to come onto the page. Now, this technique is, a, is just a fun one. It's called emboss resist. So the, um, <clears throat> the embossing bit we know we've done um, done that and the the color is resisting um where the emboss gosh I don't think I've said that right the card stock or the color is resistant that's how I should say it where you've embossed so you can see that beautiful white embossing powder that's been set and you get these beautiful, you can see the music notes. It looks so lovely. It's, um, it's embossed resist. That's what that technique is called. So I've gone quite dark down the bottom with our colour. And as I come up, I'm just lightening up with the touch that I have there. I've got my tissue close by because I'm, I'm finally learnt through all of my... <clears throat> through all of my mistakes to have my tissues close by and then if you kind of give it a light rub over the top it takes any of the ink that was sitting on top of that white embossing off and it makes it nice look at how bright that white is against isn't that pretty do you like that okay so that's we're just going to pop the um Goodness, I've lost my plot. Tranquil Tide to one side. Now, Rich Razzleberry. 
So if anyone um, doesn't know what I was talking about with the gum wall, so when I went to Seattle recently, Seattle has this wall where people cover it all with chewing gum. And I took some photos and put it here on my page. And um, Sharon's just saying that the, the, the council there, the authorities there, um, actually cleaned the wall. <sighs> I think it was actually, it was wrecking the wall. Um, and, but now people have started again to cover it up with more gum which is pretty gross but it's actually kind of it's it's a fun it's a kind of a fun tourist attraction everyone likes it I'm sure people will just do what they want to do power up to the people hey Sharon hey Carrie how are you okay so I am adding a little bit of rich razzleberry and now I want to just quickly go back into our tranquil tide and just blend those two areas together a little bit all right do you like those way those two colors kind of blend you wouldn't think that green and purple would blend together right okay just giving that a wipe over so those notes stand out beautifully Sorry about that, lovelies. My dog now wanted to go back out again. How, what a pain that little puppy is. Okay, so now we've got the Grapefruit Grove. I can't even blame that on being a Saturday. That's just my pup. She doesn't know whether it's Saturday or not. Kay says they do that every few years. Ah, oh, okay. Well, that probably makes sense, doesn't it? Now, Grapefruit Grove, we're dipping in. We're going to start as dark as we can. And do you use your, your sponges? When I stampin' up self sponges and they come in round circles like so, and I usually cut them up into bits because, you know, I'm frugal. I think most crafters are a little bit frugal. So I have these little bits and then I add little um, colour swatches to hang on to so my, my um, hands don't get super dirty, but also so I know what colours I'm playing with. So that is the Grapefruit Grove. Now we're going to go to the Petal Pink. Hey Phyllis, how are you? You love these colours. They're bright, aren't they? But they do work so well together. And now we're going on to the Petal Pink. This one actually blends super well with the Grapefruit Grove. Maybe even a little too well. But they work kind of nice together. So we'll stick with that. And finally, the So Saffron. So we're making two cards today. For those of you that have just joined in, we're making this one card front and we're going to turn it into two cards, which is kind of a bit different than normal. But a really good way to utilise one, pe one piece of work. <laughs> okay, I was writing something funny about dogs okay so I'm just going to use my tissue this is just a regular tissue and wipe over the card so it's nicely blended I wouldn't mind those two colors blending just a little bit better so I'm going to just go over that to blend the rich razzleberry and the grapefruit grove a little bit more and now give it a wipe and make that white embossing stand out super. What do you think that combination, I think, works? Going from the darkest to the lightest. That's always like a true, easy combo to make work. Darkest to lightest. Easy peasy. All right, I'm just close up my ink pads, mostly because I tend to make a mess. If I don't, with an elbow in or a dropper on my foot or on my piece of work so let me just close those up and move them to one side because we're done with our coloring now now with this card i'm probably going to be all inky with this card here um i use glue to stick down all of the pieces but i thought that i would be a bit different and i would use see whether it's actually more simple more simple simpler to use our adhesive sheets 
on the back. So I have not trialed this um, at all. So this could go badly, you know. Are you prepared to? It could all go badly. So I'm going to put the stick, the adhesive sheet on the back and we'll see what happens. So that one, like so. So the adhesive sheets come in six inch by six inch pieces and they're kind of something in our catalogue which is easily to miss um, because if you don't know what they do, you kind of just ignore it, right? So, but they are super good for this kind of embossing um, die cutting technique because it turns anything that you have into a massive sticker which I think is super cool so you take the first sheet off and it's like double-sided tape it's got sticky on both sides and um, and relief sheet on both sides so I've just stuck one down Giving, and really rubbed it on so it's stuck on nicely okay I've actually got two I've done like so now we're going to get Bertha Big Shot out to play Bertha hasn't had much of a play lately so I thought it was time so Bertha come on over and we're going to pop on our deer now I wanted to use I thought it would be fun to use the deer a few times so the first time we're rolling through our deer, I'm going to pop him kind of up the top and then I'm going to do a couple down the bottom that are a little bit off the page just to give that feeling that it's kind of all the deers are jumping up in the air and, um, you know, dashing. Well, they're going to be dashing, aren't they? Dashing through the rainbow snow. Okay, let's have a bow peep. Rolling this through. Like I said, this is the first time I've done this with the adhesive sheet behind but I'm confident that it's going to work okay so let's have a look does it cut does it cut now that's what I had to show you guys it's kind of important not to lose any of the bits when you're taking this out so normally you wouldn't care about these bits that are going to fall out at all because they would go in the bin but we want to keep all of those bits so I'm just going to and I could use our brush but I'm using a paper piercer here and I'm going to gently remove and this is a little bit of the time consuming bit which I was a little worried about with the Facebook live but bear with me I'll try and be as quick as possible just those antlers are kind of detailed, so we don't want to rip that. Okay, little deer, out you come. Come out, come out. There we go. Out he comes. So he's totally cut out, but I just want him to stay put for a minute. That's fun. Okay, and did I get all the bits? Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to do the next one. I think maybe like so. So let's get Bertha back in. Like so. Oops, that deer moved. I saw you deer move. So, bring them back again. Maybe I should have organised this earlier. Okay, now and then that. Let's see if I can do it again. Move those pieces. Like this. Now, the reason why this deer works so well for this kind of um, for this kind of negative and positive card is that even though the antlers are a little bit fiddly, there's actually 
not it's not too crazy there's not too many intricate pieces on it I think for that bit goes there I think for a card where you're going to do this you can't really have um, a card that's too busy so I'm going to put that last one down there and then we are ready to rock and roll last piece I'm remembering to keep all of my bits and pieces together and intact. Okay, Bertha, you've almost finished your work. All right. Last bit. Any bits that come out, I'm just keeping them to one side. Right in there. Okay. So, I've got that all cut out. It doesn't really look like it, but I have. And now I'm going to get a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And this is where it could all go bad, my friends. This is where trying a new technique before you practice it um, live could be bad. So let's just have a little sticky bake whether this is going to work. And just take that out. Like so. Make sure that we keep any loose bits mm, okay the body's easy enough to get out and here I don't want to rip out. I don't want to rip you. Okay, I got it. Yay! It is just the backing paper that's sticking. There we are. Okay. <laughs> All right, dashing deer, you stay there. See if I can get your friends. Oh, that bit needs to go over there. It's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. This deer wants to come out. Oh my goodness. I don't know that that one's going to work so well. Let's see. Well, I can tell you one thing. It was easier without the backing paper. Maybe with a precision platform I should have used. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it on and then see if I can pull these bits out. Best laid plans. Little ear, his tail. Okay, nearly there. Ah, all right. So you're over there. You're being difficult. I'm gonna see if I can get you now. Now I've got the other one. I can hear my boys arguing in the kitchen. No, you don't want to come. All right, let's stick you on as you are and then I'll see if I can get it all off later. Okay, stick, take the back of the sticky off like so. 
see if this makes it better or worse. Okay. I think it made it better. Okay, let's stick it on. See if I can save this poor card. Okay, let's get this on. And on the top. So, using the side as a guide, like so. So it's definitely, it definitely sticks beautifully and works beautifully. It is fiddly to use the adhesive sheets. It's tricky, yeah. It's a little bit sticky and tricky. All right, let's have a look here. So that was good. That kind of made this come away a bit easier. So that's we'll move that one to one side. Now we need to put you on. Like so. Okay. I think it's going to stick down nicely using the adhesive sheets. Hey Jessica, how are you? Rather than the glue. But yeah, time consuming. Okay, let's have a little bit of peep. That works. Like so. And I think there was just that bit there. Okay. It's all coming together. Are you still with me guys? Holy smokes. That was that was a challenge. That was my challenge for the day. So all the rest of the day is going to go smoothly, I feel. Okay, and I'm going to stick this in the corner. There we go. Now, there is little bits that you can stick on. If you've got the time and the patience, these little bits um, will make these antlers look a little bit more detailed. I'm not going to do that now, but I'll show you that I did it here. So here, I know, were you breathing with me, Vicky? That was tough work. So there, you can see here, I've stuck in little extra bits here. They are tiny. They're tiny little bits, but keep them to one side and... Um, you know, that kind of adds a little bit to it. But I'm not going to do that now. So that's the one card front. Let's finish this off with the second card front. So here I've got a piece, another piece of Whisper White cardstock. And we're going to look at this big deer first. Now we can take those little bits out. It's the sticker paper that is making it a little bit tricky. But then it works so well. You know what? Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that if you weren't doing a Facebook Live, you wouldn't care that it was a little bit fiddly because the end result works so per so beautifully. So it's just because I'm under time constraints that, you know, working with the sticker paper is making things a little bit tricky. You're doing it at home, it would it would be beautiful. It would work a treat. And you'd be so happy because you wouldn't have glue going everywhere. So I am going to pop you here, little dashing deer. See how that just, you know, those little fiddly horns, um, they look so great. All stuck down beautifully without having glue all around them. I don't know why there is purple on you. There we go. Just works beautifully. You were thinking the same, Kay, that it's just because it's Facebook Live. Don't mind the fussy card. It's just me. Am I? <laughs> you don't mind a fussy card? Good. Good, 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 good. I know you guys are all friends. You know it doesn't always work perfectly on Facebook, right? Most of the time. Okay, so I've got this stickery bit here 
and I'm just going to pop out that bit and pop that bit out. So I think if you take the sticker bit off first, that's good. And you can kind of tell where your dashing deer has to go because he's kind of cut in half there. I'm just looking. I don't know where the rest of his leg went. Holy smokes. Where did your leg go, dear? Anyways, let's stick you on. I might cut the rest of his leg off in a minute. We're amputating, dear. Don't be afraid. Okay, and I'm going to get the sticker off the back. You were being a little pest before. Dear, but you've come good now. Okay, let's get you on. And there. Yeah. <sighs> now, um, Oh, so Mel says, here's a tip from Mel, that she finds if you put it through facing up the sticker sheets, they work a little better. Hmm, worthwhile considering. I think also if you used your, I mean, they cut beautifully. There was nothing wrong with the cutting. It just was fiddly taking them off of their backing. So, um, hey, Anne, how are you? Um, okay, so now we've got... Our beautiful deer stuck on. I thought it would be fun to go back to our, um, I need to kind of have like a coffee now just to calm down, um, to go back to our embellishments and tie in some of these really lovely embellishments with our coloured cardstock. So I'm starting off with our, why can't I ever remember the name of this green? Tranquil Tide. And it's one of my favourites. And I'm just popping on, a few, I know a lot of you don't really know what to do with embellishments. So I thought this was kind of be fun to play with that too. So I'm just randomly popping on some of our Tranquil um, Tide. Then we're going up to Rich Razzleberry. And I'm keeping in kind of where the sponging would have been. So to tie in those colours along like that. Then we're going to, oopsie daisies, we're going in the wrong spot there. We're going into our, what's this colour? Grapefruit Grove. This is so cute. And then we're into our petal pink. I can breathe now, can't I? Holy samole. I don't know. Sometimes my ideas for cards should not be Facebook Lives. But I want to share them with you guys and, you know, anyways. And then we've got, uh, so, Saffron. I get bored doing easy cards. So I kind of figure you guys get bored doing easy cards too. What do you think? I think I kind of need something there. I might do another Rich Raspberry. And so saffron. Oh, I know what I've done. I'm going to take you guys off there. I think I'll take you off there and put you down there. Okay. So then I thought it would be fun because we've kind of stuck with some really bright colours would be to bring in a nice black colour to kind of make that all work well and stand out nicely against the card. So I've got... Well, I should have done two of these, but I've got the, that's the sentiment from the stamp set, Happiest Christmas Wishes. There's a few others as well, but I thought that one worked the best. I'm using my grid paper to line everything up. Use Always use your grid paper and this, just popping that in there. And then you can just fold it over the back that makes it a nice really crisp um, edge as well you don't have to cut it which is good less stress 
And then I might just trim his little leg there. I'll bring in my guillotine because I just went off the edge. Poor little leggy. Amputation required to make him nice and crisp. Okay, so then you will just get your card base and stick this on. You could do this a couple of ways. You could just glue him straight on or you could put some dimensionals underneath. Um, if you have craft foam, you could put that underneath as well if you wanted to make it a little bit thicker. And you've got your one card and then you're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. So I've used this a bit of black, basic black cardstock and done some uh, and I've done some white embossing powder for that sentiment as well. So I can go ahead and finish that one off there. And this will be your finished results. So one piece of sponging, one piece of <laughs> oh, Phyllis. One piece of sponging, one piece of cutting, but you get two cards. So that's kind of fun. Um, you could do a bunch of these all at the same time and make lots and lots of Christmas cards. And, you know, hopefully you won't be as stressed as I am. <laughs> Actually, it's all good now. It's worked out. But I thought, is this going to be the first Facebook Live ever where I just have to, like, go, no, nah, it's I can't do it. I've made a mistake. That would I've never had that happen before. It'll happen one day, but it wasn't today. Anyway, my lovelies, I um I will just around. That was long and crazy and didn't go totally to plan. But that's Facebook Live. That's crafting. Crafting, you know, you gotta you got to roll with the punches sometimes, don't you? Um, I hope you enjoyed making those, um, going through those cards together. I will post some um, links to the products I've used today so you can go ahead and purchase them from my online shop. Remember, you can purchase all of these Stampin' Up! products from me via my blog, carolynbedding.com, here in Australia. Um, I mail Australia-wide, so you do not have to be local to me to purchase from me. Um, if you've got any Stampin' Up! questions, please send me a message. I'm here to help. So have a fabulous weekend, and I will back, be back with you sometime next week. I am doing a little bit of work at our school at the moment, so I'm trying to fit in my Facebook Lives around that schedule. But um, I will be back with you sometime next week, and uh, with another Stampin' Up! tutorial. Have a fabulous weekend, my lovelies. Bye.